Welcome to my video, this is Classic, I make music under the name of Dark Corners of London and today I'd like to present to you my own Matrix fan theory. Now originally I saw the first Matrix in the cinema and I've watched the films hundreds and hundreds of times and so I've come to develop my own theories and I would like to share some of those with you. So today we're going to cover the following, that the real world just don't exist. I will also give you my theories on the story of the first anomaly and how Oracle played such a dangerous game, why Smith became a virus, and how the Merovingian was the original villain. Let's do this. Try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. And there is no real world. See, towards the end of the Matrix, Neo is in the Machine City and he's walking, as you can see here, on what looks like pure energy. But it isn't. It's actually advanced machine code, yeah? Why well, that's called level two or machine code. It's actually level two of the Matrix, yeah? This is the first clue the Matrix ain't real. Now we've actually seen this type of code somewhere else in the Matrix with one character. And who's that? Seraph! That's right. Seraph is using this particular machine golden code. This is advanced golden code, right? Hence the machine C is not real, it's made out of code. And neither is Seraph because he's in the matrix. So what Neo is actually walking on and what he's actually seeing is the advanced machine code because his powers go beyond this world. Right, on to clue number two as to why this real world is actually fake. Neo is having a fight. Bosch gets smashed in the eyes with the electric. Now remember, he's actually a real human, born again into the real world, now blinded. Anyone else wouldn't be able to see. However, guess what happens? I can see you. You can see. And guess what color Smith is? He's orange. The same kind of color as that weird code that we was looking at earlier that I've already said is advanced machine code. Smith being made out of exactly the same stuff as the machine suit. Clue number three as to why this isn't a real world is He has powers! Oh my god! A real guy in the real world would never be able to do that to any sentinels. He's clearly in level two of the Matrix. Clue number four is this weird scene how he's kind of in limbo but in fact if he was a real guy in the real world and you just got electrocuted and he was kind of unconscious you would actually be dreaming. You wouldn't be mixing with real actual programs. And as you make our way to clue number five, the whole point of why my whole theory actually stands is this moment in the film. Now, is it just me or did you not just see a solid sentinel pass through a solid ship and a solid human body? If this is a real world, the law of physics just wouldn't allow for this. It would be impossible, hence my theory of why the real world is in a real world at all. It's simply level two of the matrix and this is an orange code moving through Neo's gotcha. fake body. Now, for my theory on the first anomaly story and how the birth of Zion happened. When the matrix was first built, there was a man born inside who had the ability to change whatever he wanted, to remake the matrix as he saw fit. It was he who freed the first of us and this guy of course was the first anomaly the first human being born inside the matrix who could change things as he saw fit and by changing things he caused a lot of attention and before we knew it he changed so many things that he actually got a call from my name is Seraph I bring word from the Oracle you must come at once so at this point the anomaly goes to see the Oracle and he obviously has loads of questions about his powers what's going to happen and what it's all for that's why I called. I cannot tell you what is going to happen. All I can do is hope that if you are given the chance, you will find the courage to do what you can. Now it's at this point the anomaly meets the architect. And the architect says to him for the first time, right, we're going to create you a new world that's going to be called Zion. To select from the Matrix, 23 individuals, 16 females, 7 males to rebuild Zion. The only catch, if you make Zion, you die. The function of the One is now to return to the Source, allowing a temporary dissemination of the code you carry, reinserting the Prime Program. After he died, the Oracle prophesied his return. 
The reason the first anomaly died is just like Neo, he actually went to the source and re-uploaded his code, in which started in the second version of the Matrix and the birth of Zion. And of course, the reason he freed the first of us was he set up Zion, creating the 23 men and women to be free. My theory is also that the first anomaly is the guy that knocked over the vase in the first place. Strange enough, so did the second chosen one, the third chosen one, and even the fourth chosen one. And the reason she's an oracle is that a machine learning program can now predict the future based on the past. Hence warning the fifth one to see what he would do. And it turns out he actually did exactly what she thought. Now she realises she can influence the future and along comes Neo. And this is a moment that a machine learning program who actually should be predicting the future starts to influence it by her own suggestion. How did you know? Oh, what's really going to bake your noodle later on is, would you still have broken it if I hadn't said anything? This not just being a nod to her suggestion ability, but to the fact that Neo could have actually chosen a different outcome, but she swayed it. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. And now to one of my personal favourites of why Oracle played such a dangerous game. Well, come on. I ain't gonna bite you. So in my theory, the Oracle is actually obsolete now and marked for deletion. And so upon the seventh matrix, which will be the new version, she'll no longer be needed, in which she'll turn exile. And so she's now fighting for her own survival. Usually a program chooses exile when it faces deletion. And why would a program be deleted? Maybe it breaks down. Maybe a better program is created to replace it. Happens all the time. And when it does, a program can either choose to hide here, or return to the source. Now the reason for her deletion is she is no longer needed. The fact is the model and algorithm works and it controls the human species regardless of the anomaly situation. I'm interested in one thing, Neil. The future. And believe me, I know. The only way to get there is to get there. And because she knows she's going to be deleted, she's doing everything she can to make a change to the existing model. And that's why she introduced the concept of love. Being the one is just like being in love. No one can tell you you're in love, you just know it. Through and through. And then got Trinity to believe she loves him. The Oracle told me that I would fall in love and that that man... The man that I loved would be the one. Bear in mind, everyone's been telling her that he actually is the one. And this is where the Oracle gets to see exactly how her meddling turned out. My goodness, look at you. You turned out all right, didn't you? And even the architect confirms that none of the other guys had a love and the fact you have it has changed everything. Your five predecessors were, by design, based on a similar predication, a contingent affirmation that was meant to create a profound attachment to the rest of your species, facilitating the function of the one. While the others experienced this in a very general way, your experience is far more specific vis-a-vis -vis love. I knew everything from the beginning of this path to the end. But considering she's out for her own gain, when Neo asks, she says this. Where is this going? Where does it end? I don't know. You don't know or you won't tell me? I told you before, no one can see beyond a choice they don't understand. And I mean no one. But in reality, the truth is... I knew everything from the beginning of this path to the end. Then why didn't you tell me about the architect? Why didn't you tell me about Zion and the ones before me? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Tell me how I separated my mind from my body without jacking in. Tell me how I stopped four sentinels by thinking it. Tell me just what the hell is happening to me. Power of the one extends beyond this world. And uh, she says it extends beyond this world, and not it extends to the real world. The empty of variables in an equation. One at a time, each variable must be solved and counted. That's his purpose, to balance the equation. What's your purpose? And this is where she confirms that even though the model and the algorithm is in perfect balance, she wants to unbalance it. To unbalance it. What does that mean?
Everything that has a beginning has an end. By that, she's talking about her own deletion. She's an old program. She had a beginning. She's going to have an end. The only way out is to make sure that when the Matrix resets, she still has a purpose to be in the next Matrix. Hence, the change. Well, now, ain't this a surprise? You played a very dangerous game. AJ Smith is one of my favourite characters but not many people understand how the hell did he have the ability to be a virus in the Matrix but it all goes back to the first one and how he classifies humans. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. The human beings are a disease. A cancer of this planet. You are a plague. So because of the way Agent Smith classifies the human beings, when Neo jumped into Agent Smith's body, took over him, and obviously exploded him and imprinted some code, this was the point where that human code was actually transferred to Smith as virus code. Hence, he believes himself to be a virus. And that's how he has the ability to be a virus within the Matrix, or the way he sees the human. Some part of you imprinted onto me, something overwritten or copied. So I'm back to my original theory how the real world is just another version of the Matrix. This is when you see Agent Smith take over Bane and does he go into the real world? No, he actually goes into level 2 of the Matrix. By taking over Bane's avatar within the original Matrix and corrupting it with his virus ability, he takes over his avatar and then is able to transfer to what we think is the real world. But it's not, as I said before, it's level 2 of the Matrix. And the real reason that Neo actually has a chance of helping the machines is because Smith took over level 1 and they are actually scared that he may take over level 2 and not many people even know that that is a virtual simulation and so the big head decides to help Neo to destroy Smith, become the antivirus, stop the whole thing in level 1 and of course to stop the virus spreading to level 2. He then uploads his code, does exactly as all the other anomalies did and resets the original matrix. However, no one at any point realizes that level two is actually not a real world, and so we continue in the same cycle as before, regardless that the matrix has been reset and that Smith has been wiped. And so to my last theory, how the Merovingian is the original villain of the matrix. Now the oracle describes him as one of the oldest of us who came to the matrix a long long time ago and this is a man who believes in cause and effect and the reason is is because after seeing all these previous versions knowing that the effect will be a reset and the cause will be the one he's just here and knows all the rest of the slaves doing as they are told at this point Merv also states that he survived all predecessors meaning that they must have found him and attacked him and lost and he got away and it happens over and over again. You'll hand us. You know your predecessors have much more respect. It's pretty strange because Merv Indian actually commands his goons to shoot implying that previous anomalies got killed pretty easy. And so he admits, okay, you have some skill. Implying somehow that Neo is already stronger or better than the previous. Mark my words, boy, mark them well. I have survived your predecessors, and I will survive you. The fact that Merovingian has survived so many times against all the predecessors is the very reason that he's not really impressed when Neo turns up. Neo is the one himself, right? 
delivering a statement with a question implying that Neo actually doesn't even know if he's the one. And even though we don't get to see many Merovingian skills, at this point in the movie, we do get to see he has the power to jump into any back door at will. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the little film that I made and my theories, would really love to get your comments, uh, you know, good or bad, argue me, um, you know, agree with me, whatever you think, uh, so just throw that in the comment sections, obviously any likes or subscribes would be appreciated, if you want to check out my music, it's on my page, uh, on the dark corners of London. Uh, and also I am planning on doing a Matrix 4 Fury so if anyone has any slight interest in that then just let me know and I might actually do the video but yeah I hope you really enjoyed it peace out peeps see you soon